Hi, I'm Aymon. Welcome back to one of my RPR videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the wheel knuckle for a Honda Insight 2010. So I just did a video on how to remove and replace the wheel stud for pretty much any car, but in that case, we use this car. And the reason why I did that was because I mentioned the reason was because a wheel actually came off while my brother Oscar was driving. And what happened was it bent a lot of things. No, first off, it damaged the uh, threads. But most importantly, it bent the, uh, the studs, which means that putting anything back on would likely uh, damage it even further. So we decided to replace the entire thing entirely. And plus, it's only like $60, so we might as well do it. And also, this car has about 180,000 miles on it, which means that it's probably important to also replace the bearing, which is the center piece right here. So this is about a 70,000 miles part over here. So you probably might be able to run for another 100,000 miles if you put it back on. So. <laughs> That's Auntie Ayu. Hello. Yay. Okay. We're, we're, we're fixing Asher's car. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye. Drive safe. Hey, Relia. Really, yeah. Baby. Okay. So, getting back to this. I'm not really sure. I think I covered everything. Basically, what happened was the car, the wheel came off, it damaged everything. Alright, so sorry about the interruption. Uh, right now, we're actually gonna cut this a bit short because I, I do have to go soon. But basically, let me explain what we're gonna do. First off, we're gonna take off this center big bolt right here. And in order to do that, you can see that it's actually hammered in on the side in order for it to not turn. In order to make that round again, we're gonna wedge a screwdriver right in this notch. And then we're going to hit it with a hammer or pretty much any heavy tool and then make it round. And then we're going to use a power tool or you can do it manually. And then we're going to unscrew it. After that, let me demonstrate on this new part here. There are four bolts in total that we have to take out. There's two bolts up here, which shouldn't be too hard. Then at the bottom here, there's a bolt. In order to take out that bolt, we're gonna need to release a pin, which we'll show you later. Oh, I guess we can show you now. And once we have that pin out, it, we still need to knock it loose. So we're gonna put some PV blaster and leave it overnight. Oh, I'll just put it now. Okay. Now we're gonna leave it overnight. And then lastly, there is a bolt on the right side, right here. All right, so stay tuned, we'll see you tomorrow. It is getting dark after all. All right, so we're back, it's the next day, and we're gonna start out with taking out the central wall right here. The only way to do this right now is to use a impact driver. But if you want to take it out manually, you have to take it out before you take out the brakes. Because in order to take it out manually, you need someone to step on the brakes while you're taking it out. So just keep that in mind. But first off, what we're going to do is we're going to make this round again so I can take it out. All right, so keep in mind that the axle nut, which is what it's called, is around 181 foot pounds. So that's why we're using the impact driver. So take a 32 millimeter socket, I'm gonna use this one actually. And then we're gonna set this to three because it is 181 uh, foot pounds. And then, bombs away. Hopefully, that's my mom. Okay, drive safe. Hopefully, we've rounded it out enough so that it can be taken out. Alright, so we're back. It's actually been 30 minutes later. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell by the shadows. Okay, there's no shadows, but uh, it took us a while to get that bolt out. And let me just tell you, we tried everything. We tried WD-40, we tried using a breaker bar. A breaker bar is not going to work as well, especially when we already took the brakes off. And we kept chiseling at it, and I'm, my dad was about to give up, so I just kept I kept hammering at it with the, uh, with the hammer in order to like get the rust out because we thought it was like welded shut not like literally welded shut but it, it felt like it was welded shut and then like after i did that we switched batteries 
and then uh, I put it back on. And I just kept like going to town on it. And then like, I already took it out, but here's what happened. Like, I, as I was taking out my dad, I was like, oh, he's taking it out, it's spinning. And I was like, I, st I kept going after it was already out. And then, <laughs> cause I was just so angry at this stupid bolt that wouldn't come out. And uh, you know, when it came out, I felt like really victorious. And then my dad was like, what are you doing? And I was like, yeah, yeah. But well, we got it out. So like, you know when they describe someone angry, they're literally like shaking in anger. So I was, I was literally shaking, but because of the, uh, the impact there. So anyway, we're gonna move on to the next step. So I said that the next step was gonna be these two bolts that connected to a strut. And then after that, we're gonna deal with the tie rod. So let's get the, these two bolts out of the way first. And those are pretty easy. They're just number 19 with the breaker bar. Oh, there it is. We're gonna have an extension because it's a bit tricky to get to. I felt really, really accomplished when I got that bolt out though. And then this one. After we take this out, we're gonna leave the bolts in just so that you can have it sort of hanging on the bolts, but we should still take them out. Okay, so now we're gonna take it out using the impact driver. I mean, you don't have to, but we're gonna mitigate, we're gonna expedite it. Speed one. There we go. So now we got the bolts out. I mean the the nuts out. All right. So now we're gonna deal with the tie rod. So in order to take out the tie rod, we have to take out this pin right here. So this pin, when it's new, it looks like this. We actually have a ton of spears. 